Hi everyone and welcome to Ban in a Box 2022 for Windows. In this video I'm going to have a quick look at the major new features in Ban in a Box 2022. Uh, there will be a, a full new features video later where we really dive into the new features in much more detail. So this video is more of a way to just show you what the features are, how to start using them, and where to find them. So I'm going to be going through this list right here that you can check out at our, our main homepage, pgmusic.com. I'm going to go through these features here, uh, one by one in order here. Um, and just talk a little bit about them and show you them in action. And uh, uh, as I said, there will be a more comprehensive video coming later. But for now, this will give you a, a pretty good intro to what these features are all about. All right, so the first feature we're going to have a look at is all tracks are equal. Now, this isn't uh, one of the more glamorous features uh, that, that we've added with Banner Box 2022, but it's a very useful one and one that a lot of our customers have requested. So the idea with this is that in Banner Box 2021, we introduced all of these utility tracks. And they were tracks that you could record your own audio onto, uh, or you could also add real tracks to them. However, you could not add real drums to them or loops or that kind of thing. And so they've now been made like the other tracks, uh, the, the original uh, Band in a Box tracks, in that uh, you can add whatever you like, drums, uh, loops, uh, anything at all. Now, the other thing that's new about that, with that all tracks are equal, is that with the main Band in a Box, original Band in a Box tracks, when you loaded a style that had real drums and, and real tracks, or you've added your own real tracks to those original tracks, when you press generate and play, um, it doesn't create new audio files. Basically, it's just with those tracks, it's just pointing to the original source material that you have installed on your computer, pointing to different parts of them. So it will point to a bar here and maybe four bars there and two beats here in, in another file, it would just point to all of those. And that's what uh, what you'd be hearing when you, you played your song in Band in a Box. However, if you added a real track to one of the utility tracks in Band in a Box 2021, it would generate the part and write it as a WAV file. So it would create a new file that would kind of correspond with whatever file you're, you were working in. Like this is this Band in a Box file, for example, is called Echo One Demo, uh, Echo Fast Blues Rumba SGU. So it would create a brand new WAV file that would go along with this and would automatically be saved along that with a, a similar name, but to indicate that it's one of the utility tracks. So what that means is that if you're if you're working on a lot of files and you're using these utility tracks a lot, it takes up a lot of space on your hard drive, and it also just makes it more cumbersome because then not only do you have to keep track of the, the band in a box file you're dealing with, you also have to keep track of all of those extra audio tracks that get created every time you add a new real track onto the utility tracks. However, now we've got all tracks are equal, which means these now all work exactly the same as the original band in a box tracks in that if you add real tracks to them, it doesn't create a new audio, audio file. These tracks are also just like the original ones pointing to the source material that, that you've installed in your Band in a Box folder or on your Band in a Box hard drive, wherever that those that audio resides, uh, which makes it uh, so much easier for file management and for uh, you know not taking up a huge amount of hard drive extra hard drive space if you've created a ton of of Band in a Box files. So that's a very useful feature. And of course, now you can also add real drums and they work the same. They're not creating new, uh, new audio files for the, for when you, when you add real drums to this. So, um, yeah, that's, so it's a very useful feature and, uh, makes your workflow in Band in a Box a lot smoother. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now by adding a couple of tracks to these utility tracks Then I'll save the file and we'll have a look at that file. Uh, okay. So. Well, this, we've got a, this Echo One Fast Blues Rumba. That's actually a, a requested uh, style. We, we had a, a lot of requests over the past years, year for just more and more blues in general. And we've added a ton of blues with this new release. We've, uh, we've got lots. And this is just one of the ones uh, that, again, was specifically requested. And um, so we've got uh, Fast Blues Rumba, Slow Blues Rumba, 
and um, and lots of other blues as well. So I'm going to add a soloist, and again, it'll be a soloist that was recorded specifically with this uh, blues rumba in mind. Now I've got it already filtered. Uh, I can I can hit show all. This is all of the real track, so we could pick from there. But I'll enter that same uh, filter again, rumba blues, and I'll type soloist. There we go. Um, and yeah, then I'll pick this soloist right here. Okay. Uh, before I press generate and play to listen to it though, um, in the past you haven't been able to add real drums. Uh, you could get real drums onto utility tracks in a kind of a convoluted manner, but you couldn't add them directly to it. Uh, and again, then they would also be big wave files. So, but now we can just add real drums, loops, user tracks, whatever we want. So I'm going to add a, a real drum here as well. Now I've already got a filter entered here. If I go clear, this is the full list of all of the real drums, but I had it filtered by single, which is um, means that anything that has this single in brackets here, that means that those are uh, just either a single percussion instrument or a single element uh, of electronic uh, drums or even a drum kit. Yeah, and I'm gonna try this one here, this break drum soca here. So I'm gonna add that to the mix as well. So now I will press play. Alright, so now I'm going to save this song, and I'm going to go save, uh, and I'll go save as. Uh, and I'll save it to my songs folder here. Bannerbox 2022 new features. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll save this file in here. Now I'll go save. So in, in the past, when if, if we'd done this and we added a, a guitar solo to one of the utility tracks, we'd, be, we'd go into that folder and we would see this SGU file I just saved, and we would also see this saved as a, as a WAV file, taking up space. But instead now, I just open it up, and it's just a single file, and 61 kilobytes is a tiny file compared to what uh, a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of audio uh, files get into the, in, uh, get very large. So yeah, so there's, that file is saved, and um, you can also, even if I was to freeze this, if I was to freeze these tracks uh, and um, save it. Now it saves it a little bit larger, still still a very small file, but that has now saved it uh, along with the specific instructions that are pointing. Remember I said earlier that the file points to different your, the different source material. Now it's saved that information in here as well. So when we open it again, it'll be exactly the same solo, exactly the same performance. Um, but it's, and the file is a little bit bigger, but still 183 kilobytes is still a tiny file. So I'll open that again. We can see, and there we go. So there, the tracks are frozen, so it'll be exactly the same performance for all that, but uh, still a relatively tiny file. So the next item in the list that I was going to have a look at was playable real tracks. Now this is a very exciting feature that allows you to take a real track and go into, into the notation or piano roll window and edit some notes and have those new notes that you've edited be played as MIDI notes. So when we go into the, into this, um, the piano roll for this track, we'll see a bunch of notes. Now those, the notes that we see are not what we're hearing. They're used uh, so that if, like, if we go into notation and we're looking at this file here, we can see the notes in tab and in notation. And so in the piano roll here, these are the, th this is what the notes are. But we can do use this playable real tracks feature to add notes, mute the guitar itself here and have it playing the MIDI notes. And now this is the, the great thing as well, is that it's gonna use 
for them for those MIDI notes, it's going to use a sound specifically made to go along with this that was actually recorded with single note samples at this recording session where we recorded this Rumba Blues soloist. So that very guitar with the, the exact amp tone and effects and everything will be what we're going to be hearing but playing those MIDI notes. So say if I, I have this song here and I want those first 16 bars to basically be a guitar solo intro and then maybe I'm going to want to sing here so I'm going to want the guitar soloist to stop playing here but rather than just kind of end abruptly here I need to I, I want it to sort of play something on the downbeat of this to, to uh, that will lead me into what I want to uh, you know the singing the vocal part so uh, I'll go back into the piano roll here and I'll, I'll find that bar here that was at bar 17 is where I'm saying that I want to um, uh, I want to stop the solo. So there's a new feature here that coincides with the playable reel tracks. Um, oh, no, actually, I have to hit playable reel tracks first, actually. So I'll hit playable reel tracks. This will install a high Q patch plugin on this track. OK to proceed. And I will hit OK. And so that now has loaded. We can see that there's a green outline around playable reel tracks. That means there is now a corresponding MIDI patch uh, that's that that will play. So, but what I'm going to do here now is right click right around bar 17 here, and I'm going to go create mute region to mute real tracks. So that adds this bar up here, and uh, you can treat it basically just like another note, move it around uh, in time or change the duration. And um, you know what? I'm actually going to change the duration of this to go all the way to full, full through that first that first chorus. There are other ways to mute real tracks as well, but um, this is a new way to do that as well. Because, so what I wanna do is I wanna mute the real tracks so that I can add some notes and have those notes play instead. Now with this feature, you can also add notes to play them in addition to the ones that are there, but Right now, I'm going to actually have it muted. So before I add any notes at all, I'll just start playing from bar 14 here. So that has muted these. So these now, these, these notes that are black here, um, the blue just means they're overlapping, but the, the notes that are black here, um, that, those are notes that are not, you're, you're not hearing them. And the reason they're there, of course, is as I pointed out before, so that we could see it in notation, but they don't actually get played or heard. Now you can highlight some notes and change them to playable real tracks. So I'll do that right now. Uh, change selected notes to playable. Um, I don't know how this is gonna sound, uh, uh, but uh, let's give it a listen anyway. <laughs> So yeah, so that's, we're now hearing those, uh, those MIDI sounds there. But what I wanted to do instead was just add my own notes. So I just pressed delete there to, to delete all of those notes. I just want a single note here to play as sort of a final thing so that it doesn't just cut off abruptly, so that it goes into this next section. So there's at least some kind of note there to end the solo and then the singing can start uh, at the same time there. So let me just play it again here. So what I'll have it do is it'll play that last note on the, with the real track and then I'll add this note down here and I'll just hold it so that it'll just play that high note and then the, the octave down to there and that's how that will end and then I could go into a singing part here. So now these are uh, the were the real charts that were there from before. So, but I have not made those playable, so they're still black. If I click on them, I can hear what notes they are, but they won't play when we're playing this back. Um, you know, unless I do what I did before and and make them playable. So that's a little bit a little introduction to the playable real tracks. Um, I'm going to actually uh, I'm going to pause this video and show you a couple more examples where we can get into a little bit more of a uh, 
you know, a little more of an interesting part. With this one here, I just kind of wanted a single note there to sort of end off my solo in a, in a, you know, concluding kind of kind of way, um, and it was great for that. But I'll I'll show you a couple more examples now where uh, where I get into it it uh, a little more. All right, here is another real style uh, that is new with Banner Box 2022. This fission funky fusion style. Uh, it's got a couple of gu new guitars uh, with uh, the with Nashville great Brent Mason playing this this great fusion part here. So I'll just play a little bit for you here. Okay, so another great thing for with the playable reel tracks is to be able to, if you have a specific part in mind for any of these instruments, to be able to enter that in. So this eight bar section here, for example, So I'm going to focus on this guitar here. So it's great held part. It's got this that that sweep into the chord and and it's plain. But if I was arranging this, I might want some some I might have something specific in mind that I want the guitar to do for the C major 9 chords here. So I'm going to show you that right now here. So first of all, uh, like in the other one here, I'll, I'll uh, well, you know what, I'll leave those soloed, but I'll, I will go into the piano roll again here, and I've got this guitar selected here, and it was at, um, what bars was it there? Here, here it was, bar nine, B, made, B flat major seven, I was gonna leave that, but then when it plays the C major nine, uh, I wanna add some specific notes of my own to that. And then I'll do the same when the C major nine comes back here as well. So first of all, I'll set, select playable reel tracks. So that is now there. That's enabled, it's got the little green box around it here. And I will set this create mute re region in here. So there we go. So now, you know what, I'll actually, I'll make these notes playable. Uh, and I'll just I'll just play it right now just to listen to it and then I might change these notes I, I have kind of in mind have some sort of descending uh, arpeggio that would end rather than just playing a, a um, Let's you know sweep into a held chord. I want like a descending arpeggio that would then hold over So uh, so these are playable now I, I use that feature and you can see they are colored green here uh, whereas the other notes are black or um, this note is blue because it's overlapped, but uh, but these notes here now are clearly these green notes uh, are playable. So let me just play it right now as it is. Uh, now this is one thing as well um, that the guitars uh, are a, an octave lower than they they sound. So I'm going to raise this. Uh, just because that's that's how they appear in notation, and since these black notes are intended for notation, they appear uh, they're an octave lower than they should be. So, so let me try that again. So there was, you know, I'm going to move this over so it it doesn't get the uh, that sweep in there. Now that's it sounds pretty stiff because because these are intended for just for charts they're not necessarily an exact representation so you don't get the sweep into it with these because they're as as I said they're intended for the um, the notation so that it appears in here. Um, so that being said. Uh, at least I now have these and I can use these as a starting point. So I said I wanted some kind of, you know, I'm going to delete these, but here's the first note there uh, on that G. And then here it's playing, uh, and I'm going to change this so that it goes on the, uh, on the eighth note. So it'll be dot, 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 dot. There we go.
Now let, let me play that. And you know what? Maybe I'll go back up again as well. And then he'll hold that for the rest of the bar here. So I'll play that now. And I'll do the same thing over here. You know what, I'm gonna delete these notes here. I will add a playable region here as well. And this time I'm just gonna go back here and I'm gonna highlight these and I'll go copy I'll put the, the cursor right at the beginning of this bar and then paste. So we've got them in there now. So I'll zoom out a little bit. Right, and I actually want to do one other thing. When it's now that it's holding to here, I was thinking, like if it was a real guitarist playing, I would. I was thinking that would actually be kind of a nice place for a little use the whammy bar to sort of dip the notes down and bring them back up again. And a lot of that kind of stuff you can do as well. So I'm going to change the view here to pitch bend. That changes this down here. So now anything I do down here will affect the pitch bend. So I'm going to zoom back in again just so I can get this uh, this right here. So the zero means it's a, a pitch bend of zero. So I'm just going to draw a little line from the zero point down here to, like that. And, um, and then draw it back up again to, to the zero point there. So what that means is it's going to put every single one of these little lines here is a pitch bend uh, controller and that means it'll be It'll bend a little bit, then a little bit more, a little more, a little more down to here, and then it'll go back up to uh, to normal up here. So let me just play that and see how that sounds. You know what? That was that uh, was a little bit too wide there. I thought. So I'm going to straighten that out, and I'll go. I'll just make it a little a little more narrow. Uh, and see how that sounds. Maybe I'll just go a little bit down and then I don't know how this is going to sound but we'll see. And then maybe no, I'll change it if it doesn't sound good. Yeah, now actually that was kind of cool. So I'll uh, unsolo this now and I'll zoom out a bit more and we'll go back here. And uh, so now let's hear the whole band. So what's what it, it will be playing the whole band as real tracks, except for this, these two bars here. And then these two bars here where just this guitar will play this specific thing that I wanted it to play. So that just gives you a good sense of uh, playable real tracks and you can you can probably imagine all the other things that you can do with it once you try, start experimenting with some of the other sounds as well. The multi riffs feature is a feature that did exist in Band in a Box previously but in a completely different way than, than we have it in now. Uh, previously 
you were able to take a particular reel track and set it to multi-riffs and it would kind of take over the mixer and create seven different versions of the same reel track, which you could then uh, piece together apart kind of from that. But it was very complicated, difficult to use. Uh, the feature now is pretty much redesigned from scratch and it's way more intuitive and fun to use. So I'll just give you a quick little demonstration of that here. There is also another uh, um, more extensive multi-riffs video that you can watch as well. But uh, I'll show you here, I've got this Jazz Fred style loaded here. So this is just a rhythm section style. And one great use of the multi-riffs feature is to sort of piece together a solo from start to finish where you can try out a bunch of different phrases like say, for example, the first four bars, you could you could generate a part of the solo just over those four bars, then generate a different, a completely different part over those four bars, and then keep generating until you find one you like. You could toggle back and forth between them to sort of yeah, A, B, compare the two of them, and uh, then pick the one you want, then move on to the next four bars or the next two bars or, or whatever you like. So I'm going to do that right now, and there's a hot key to get into it, and that is the is F8. So this is the dialogue here, and um, you can uh, pretty much do everything you want to do in here. I can generate a solo from start to finish with just sampling different phrases and going all the way through right from within this dialogue without even leaving this dialogue here. You can select which track you want to do it with, so you can even go back and forth between different instruments to create parts. But I, I will create a solo on the melody track here, and I will click on the main reel track to add a um, jazz sax soloist here. Um, and actually, I did a tenor sax in a previous video, so why don't I pick an alto sax uh, here for this one. All right, so we've got the sax pick there. You can do it by range where you can enter specific ticks and you can do this right in the audio edit window. Uh, if you select a range in the audio edit window and then come into this dialog, it will have that here, but I'm gonna do it by bars. So we'll start at chorus one, bar one, and I'll do it for four bars. I'm not sure there's the start offset. I'll just leave it at zero. I will allow lead in so it, it can play before the, the bar that in question, so it can, uh, it can start this just before bar one. Generate an extra beat. Uh, yeah, you know what, and, and it, doing that will also, so right now I've got bar one selected, I'm gonna generate four bars so it can start a little bit ahead of time and it can end a little bit after bar four and go a little bit into into bar five as well. So I'll allow that as well. Uh, we, wanna, oh, we wanna replace the existing one that's there. Yeah, you can just start by pressing generate now. So I'll do that. So it's going to generate this sax solo for, uh, for four bars here. So that was just the first four bars. And now I can press generate again, and it will generate another part over those four bars. And I don't even need to stop, I can just keep pressing generate new again and again. So actually that one, I kind of like that one, so that, that might be good, but you know what? I'll press generate again. You'll also notice every time I press generate new, uh, this changes from riff, riff. It, it, originally it was riff one of one, then two of two, then three of three, now it's four of four. So I'll generate more, that, so if I generate again, it'll go to riff five of five. I think actually I like that one, so I'm going to stop there, but I want to go back and listen to the other ones I already generated. So I'm going to put a little memo, which will kind of be associated with riff six here. Uh, and I'll just put, I like this one. And then uh, I can go previous, and now I can listen to this one, and I can start playback again from within here, and I can just toggle through hitting previous and next to try the different ones out. So I'll do that right now.
So I kind of like that one, so I'll go pretty good too. So now I've put some memos beside a couple. I like that one, and then I thought this was pretty good, but uh, let me listen to the others then. Oh, and riff one of one. Now, if uh, I hadn't generated anything to start with, so if I had, that would be the, the first riff would be that. But since there was nothing there when I started, the riff one is basically nothing. So it's riffs two, three, four, five, and six are the ones that I generated from here. And I'm going to go ahead actually to this one here. This was the one I liked the best. So I'm going to hit accept. So that now basically writes that one in as, as the riff for the first four bars. So now I'm going to change this to bar five. So now it's gonna now I'm gonna create um, solos over these four bars here. So I think actually this one here is the one I liked, so I'll accept that. Um, and now I'll continue on uh, with bar nine here. So you can see I could continue on and basically create the entire solo, picking the specific phrases that I wanted to pick. And um, yeah, so that gives you way more control that, uh, than you've ever had before in Band in a Box for piecing together solos. And it doesn't even need to be solos. It can be uh, rhythm instruments as well or um, uh, horn parts. Um, I'll actually skip to a different song here now. All right, so I've got another song loaded here. Now this one here is a blues shuffle and it's got an, an organ solo. This was another requested real track that we've included with the, this release, having a, a new blues organ soloists. But for this one here, for bars 13 to 24, so these this little 12 bar blues chunk here, I'd like to have a really simple backing horn section uh, playing throughout these 12 bars. Um, and there are some other new reel tracks in the, the bonus 60 that come with the, the bonus 49 pack if you purchase that uh, as, as along with uh, the, the new version of Van in a Box. You get these saxophone grooves. So these are very simple but very useful repetitive parts that you can kind of mix and match together uh, to, to create kind of custom simple backing horn parts. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here, first of all. I am going to uh, add some real tracks using this, uh, the multi-riff here, to four different utility tracks. So I'm gonna go to utility track one, and for this one here, I'm gonna go to the main real track, will be, um, I'll type in sax, groove, and it's gonna be the alto sax groove one. So I'm going to generate this part here, and starting at bar 13, I'm going to go for 12 bars, actually. So you can see that's just an alto sax, and it's just playing a very simple part. Dot, 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 dot. So uh, that's just the alto sax, first of all. And so I'm now on utility track two. I'm going to add... sax groove one but for the high tenor part generate that and 
And then I'm going to do the same for this one. But this will be the tenor sax, the lowest tenor sax part. Generate it. <laughs> And then finally, on this one here, I am going to groove one, add the baritone, and generate that part. Okay, so that's a, it's a, just a very useful, cool part. But at bars 21 and 22, rather than keep playing the bop, 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 I want to have them hold through those two bars. So that's another groove, and it's just called held. So for that, I'm going to enter here bars 21 and go for two bars. And then I am going to add, go back to sax one here, and I'm going to add an alternate for this one sax held generate that part so you uh, i'm not sure if you're able to hear that but the te the two tenors and the baritone were still playing that bop bop part over there but the alto was then playing just a held part over there so i'm going to do the rest now so we'll go to the tenor here put an alternate there sax held and then the tenor high i'll generate that part and then i will go to this one i'll pick an alternate and go sax held and pick this one accept that so now it's you you can kind of hear it coming together there the only thing that's still playing that rhythmic part is the baritone, so I will add the baritone there and generate that part. So there we go. So now let me just, uh, I'll start this at bar 13 here. And um, I'll just play from there. All right, the next feature we're going to have a look at is microchords. Now this has uh, also been a big request that we've had to be able to have more than four chords per bar. So Band in the Box up until now has had a limit of four chords per bar, so one chord per beat basically. But now with microchords you can have up to four chords per beat. So in a 4-4 in a four -four song basically you have up to 16 chords per bar. Like in a slow in a slow funk song, for example, you can have chords changing on every sixteenth note in it, and uh, so this this opens up a lot of arranging possibilities that just never existed before in Band in a Box. So I've got a song loaded here. It generally the feature generally works well with slower songs. For the slower songs, you're more likely to want to have uh, chord changes happening more frequently within a beat. So, so it's very useful uh, for, for slower songs, but even with faster songs, there are lots of uses for it as well. I've got one of our new country styles that has kind of explosive held uh, electric guitar chords. So you get, we have some guitars that are playing just uh, like power chords, just chugging along, but we also have some that do sort of long sweeping uh, chords and this was a, this was another big request that people had for country styles and these are also part of a larger group of styles that we've added with Band in the Box 2022 with, that we've been calling country producer electric guitars which is just layers of different guitars that mix together give you a nice full modern country sound 
So that's what we have right here now. And um, I'm going to use uh, some micro chords within this. Uh, so what, what I'm going to do here, I'll just play a little bit of it first. Okay, so what I'd like to try is having the chords change on the eighth notes in the second bar to kind of give a, an ascending and descending kind of uh, thing happening here. Um, like I said, you can have them changing on the, the 16th notes, but first of all, I'd just like to try uh, entering some different chords on beat one and then the end of one and then beat two and then the end of two. So um, there are a few ways to do it. You can actually do it uh, just, just by typing in chords. There are some, some things that you can do to get these chords. But you can also just type M and that opens up this micro chords dialog here. So here you can actually enter in the chords. This is beat one of bar two and then beat two. And you, so you can see you can enter different chords uh, in each of the 16th notes within here. So for this though, I just want to have them happen on the eighth note. So I'm going to enter on every other one, C and then D minor and then E minor, D minor, and then back to C here on beat three. Now you can see as I enter all of those, we can see underneath the C chord here is, uh, is still under there because that's the underlying chord uh, for that bar. Whereas these, these ones that I'm entering in as micro chords are mostly kind of um, passing chords, really. Uh, so the underlying chord is still C, but you have these micro chords showing over top of that. Um, it didn't show me the C again down to here. I think that's because the, the underlying chord is the same. It's a C here. Um, I would still like to see that there myself just to, to, to show that it's part of this pattern, uh, but that doesn't display there. So I'll hit OK here, and uh, now let's just play this. So we'll, we'll give this a listen here. So there you can see all of those chords now played on the eighth notes for the first two beats, exactly as I entered in here. So there's another thing with micro chords, however, that, uh, that I wanted to show you. These, as I mentioned before, these are kind of passing chords and having every single instrument in the whole band playing all of these uh, is maybe overkill. So we could have some of the instruments just playing the C chord and then have some of the instruments actually following these micro chords. And I'll show you how to do that right now. I'll press M to go back in the micro chords dialog and then we're gonna set excluded tracks. So right now it says all tracks are included. So that's why every single instrument within here, were, they were playing these, uh, uh, the micro chords. But I'm gonna hit set here and I'm gonna exclude all. So if I press this, that means every single instrument from within this, they're all going to ignore this except I want two guitars to follow this pattern. And it's these ones here, we have some power chords here playing like a muted power chords part on for guitar four, and we have another power chord uh, part on guitar two here. So I'm gonna click on guitar two and I'll go include. So this one will be included. And then I will also click on this one and click here to include this one. So it was, I could have just, gone exclude each of the other ones separately but it was much easier to exclude everything and then just include the couple that I wanted here. So that's now happening there so I'll now generate and we'll listen to this again. So they, uh, you could hear there, that was now a lot more subtle. A couple of the guitars were doing that and it, it didn't conflict with any of the other guitars, but you got that, uh, you have that little arranging possibility there to have some, some of the guitars or any of the other instruments follow this. Uh, if I wanna go back in there again and maybe include the bass, I could do that. Let's see how it sounds if I just include the bass. So the others are all the same, but now the bass is included as well. And let me just solo those uh, instruments, the drums and those two guitars, so we can hear just those by themselves. So 
So as you can see, it, it opens up a lot of arranging possibilities in there. I'm also going to show you here, remember I told you that I went into the microchords dialog to get that up there, but you don't have to. Um, you can now use parentheses when entering chords. So if you use parentheses, then any chords within the parentheses are microchords for that beat. So just as a reminder, to enter chords in, in the past, you would separate beats one and two with, with a comma. So if I went C comma D minor, that enters a C at beat one and a D minor at beat two. Okay, so it's the same with microchords then. If you can enter parentheses and then anything within the parentheses are in beat one, then you can put a comma and then put another set of parentheses and anything within those are in beat two. So this up here, I could, I could repeat down here by going parentheses, C, comma, D minor, and then end parentheses. So those are within the parentheses, so those are beat one, and then another comma outside of the parentheses, and then another one, and then go E minor, comma, D minor, end parentheses, and we have exactly what we had up, up there, we now have down here. I also told you that you could have four chords per beat rather than just two. Now, I don't know how it will sound with this uh, particular song, but I'll show you that now as well. If I go C, D minor, and then put the comma within the parentheses, E minor, comma, D minor, and then put a parentheses, and there, now we have all of those, all four of those chords within that first beat. We still have these within the second beat. You know what? I'll, I'll add even more. So I'll do the same thing. C, D minor, E minor, F, parentheses, and then I'll put another comma, and then I'll go G, F, I'll do a descending thing now, E minor, D minor, and then back to C there. So now let's hear how that sounds. I'll generate the whole thing again, and then I'll start over here. And it's using the same exclude and include as I put up here because that will continue on until you change it. So if we wanted something else in here, like maybe just one of those, let me go into the microchords dialog again here and we'll set this. So you can see still here it's it's keeping the same settings as, as the last time I entered something. So I'll go exclude all and maybe in this case, maybe I'll just have the bass playing that part there. Regenerate. So there you heard now, all of the instruments were playing just a regular old C chord, which was the underlying chord here, but we have the bass playing this ascending and descending quick pattern here. So again, with this, you can see lots of options for arranging. And this actually leads to the next big feature that I was going to show you, and that's motifs, which is very closely related to the microchords and uses the same dialogue. So I'm going to go in here and press M to get the, the uh, microchords as well. But here we'll enter motifs. And I'm going to keep actually, this is, this is at this point, it was still just guitar two, bass, and guitar four. Are the only ones included in here and I'll they'll be the only ones included with the, this motif as well. So with the motifs uh, it's it works very similarly to the microchords except it's just accenting whatever chord happens to be playing. So we're not going to enter new chords in the microchords area up here. We're just going to put a check by motifs. So if I went like this So there's a motif and then I've got rests all here and then I'll put a check under motif as well. So this is beat one and then the and of beat two. So it's dun, ba. And then I'll put another motif at beat four, but I'll still put rests for all of these around it. So what that means is that the instruments that are included here will just play short little hits at beat one, uh, the and of beat two, 
and then the, and then beat four. So I'll press OK here. I'll regenerate again, and then I'll skip ahead to listen to bar five here. So that was pretty cool, um, but I think I'd like to actually change it um, so that the last hit doesn't actually rest. So I'll press M to get the motifs again. So instead of entering the rests here, I'll just leave them blank. So this should now hold there. So I'll try that again. So you can see with the micro chords and the motifs together, you now have a lot more control over the arrangements of your songs. All right, the next feature we're going to have a look at is volume automation. And um, I'm using actually the same file that I was using in the last part uh, where I talked about motifs and micro chords. Uh, but with this one here, I've actually added a pedal steel. There are lots of really cool country guitars in there. But adding a pedal steel to a country style like this just, just makes it even more country. So I've added a pedal steel, and I, it's at a good level for uh, the first eight bars here. Let me just play a little bit of it for you here. But at bar nine, I want to kind of boost it out a little bit more, uh, just so I can, uh, just so it stands out a little bit more and makes this section a little bit different. When you're doing a mix, often you'll you'll make a new section kind of be like a new scene almost in a movie. Uh, so so you want to have a few things change up just so that the listener is is on their toes a little bit. So I want to bring the uh, the pedal steel up a bit in the mix. And once I do that, I might decide to lower the mix of some other instruments. Now, in the past, to do this, you could use the F5 dialog to enter volume changes. So you could enter change by, and then you had to actually enter a, a, a decibel value here, uh, which is very awkward, not intuitive at all to use. Um, and the other thing too is that sets it for the bar, at the downbeat of the bar, you have no other further control of, uh, you know, of a gradual fade or anything like that. So that's the, that's the way you had to do it in the past. But now with Bannerbox 2022, we've added a node-based volume automation right on the track in the audio edit window, which makes this kind of thing so much easier, more fun to do, and and you just have way more control. Uh, and it's it's yeah, and it's great for your workflow. So pedal steel. I'm going to open up the audio edit window here. And uh, I'll just start playing a little bit uh, until we hear at bar nine there. So that's where I wanted to bring it out. So first of all, I'm going to press this button up here to turn on the volume automation for this, or not necessarily even just to turn it on, but to display the volume automation for this uh, track. So, and it was right here at bar nine that I wanted to bring it up. And so I don't even want to do it necessarily uh, suddenly, just all of a sudden have it come up. So now you'll notice I clicked on the line here that added this little blue dot here. So that is a node and you can enter as many of those on this, uh, the volume timeline here as you like. So if I enter another one here, just by clicking on it. Now, when, if you click and drag, you can then bring it up. And it shows you, you can see there that it's now at 2 dB or 3 dB or even up to 4 or even more. Um, the other thing too is if I hold control and move my mouse over this part of the window, it uh, it changes the zoom, the, the vertical zoom here. So that allows you to go even higher, like you can set it to, to 8 or 9 up there. But let, let me just, I'll try this now, just doing like a, a, a boost of 4 dB here. And I'll just start playing here and see how that sounds. Mm -hmm. 
and I think I want it even more there. So let me, you know what? I'll I'll go up even further to there. Maybe ten, maybe we'll go up by ten dB there. And now I'm going to fine tune it a little more because uh, the, there's a bit of a, yeah, I, I, I was enjoying it up until a point and then it, it seemed a little bit too loud. So let me just start back here again. So there, I'll bring it down a little bit because it's, you can see it's kind of swelling a little bit here. So I'll bring it down a little bit there. So it, you don't hear the changes during playback, so, but you can make your changes and then you'll hear the, the changes once you restart playback here. So let me try that again from here. So that was the, the section. We're now back uh, to a new section here. So now I will bring this back down to here. And let me listen to that again from here. Okay, so again for this section here, now we have two instruments that are both in similar ranges and um, and both doing something a little more, there's a little more movement in both of those. The other instruments, some of them were just sort of chugging along, so it didn't really get in the way. But I'm hearing this guitar here now getting a little bit in the way of the pedal steel. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this guitar out during those those eight bar uh, sections, not out entirely. Well, maybe I will, I'll decide once I get there, but, but at least bring it down so that there's less of a sort of conflict between those two instruments there. So here's guitar one again. So you, I'll just uh, enter a node there here, and I'll, I'll before I move these, I'll actually en enter a node as well. Oh, at bar 17 actually, here's where I wanted it to come back to where it was. And then I'll enter another one there. And so these ones there then, these kind of act as anchors, the ones on the on the far left and the far right here, kind of act as anchors that I can then uh, bring these down. Oh no, that that's probably too much there. I'm gonna zoom this back in here again. So yeah, I don't I don't want it to be uh, to be completely out, but maybe well I'll try right now I'll try maybe negative five dB. So um, yeah, I'm gonna give that a shot. So you see that gave a nice uh, a nice change to uh, the new section of the song and you can it's that's a great way to to have things be different throughout an entire song so um, you know so as I mentioned before you're kind of creating a new scene for you you're, you create a scene for verse one and then you create a new scene for verse two and then a slightly new scene for the chorus and uh, and then something different entirely when you get to the back to the third verse. So even that's a little bit different from the first verse. So those kinds of things are now a lot easier to do within Band in a Box.